Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all and welcome to the channel. In this video we will discuss a rather important topic to understand maps or to understand the functionality of maps or the infrastructure of maps and that is hash tables. Hash tables are a data structure though we will not be using them in this course because of the nature of their usage. They are normally used to be parts of the infrastructure of a program and that is beyond the scope of this tutorial series. But we will understand the concept of hash tables insha'Allah bi'ithnillah or rather we will learn it, hopefully you understand it. And then we will apply that concept to hash the hash map class. But before we begin, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wal-mursaleen, Sayyiduna Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen. Warda Allahumma anna ma'ahum ajma'een, Allahumma ameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alameen innaka hamidun majid We begin in the name of Allah the most merciful in this life and in the hereafter we thank him for all of his blessings that he has bestowed upon us for they are innumerable and we pray that we follow in the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his fellow companions. Amen. We also ask for prayers and blessings to be bestowed upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his followers, as they were bestowed upon Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, and his followers. I will just finish creating this array quickly before we begin the lecture. <coughs> Uh, okay, fine, I will leave this block to be larger than the others, no problem. A hash table, as we mentioned, is a data structure. But it is a data structure that uses another data structure. Its foundation is not a hash table, its foundation is actually an array. A one-dimensional array, to be exact. But it uses hashing for its structure. How so? There is an issue when storing a myriad of elements within a data structure. What is the issue? We have seen from the big O notation that there are certain data structures that do not abide by the constant function O of 1. Instead, they abide by other functions, which means that if the element number increases to be a large number, the time complexity will increase as well, slowing the performance of the program. In order to expedite that process, Hashing was created for the hash tables. How does this expedite the process? Let us see. If I wish to store a list of names, for example, in this array here, but I wish to expedite the process of iterating through that array, how would I iterate quickly through that array? Instead of using, or rather, I, I will rephrase the question, but I will create the array to show, to clarify the question. I have different names here. Try to deduce the nature of these names if you are able to oh wait I believe 
he was before Prophet Noah, peace be upon him. And I just gave away the answer. <coughs> uh, I believe it was Prophet Ibrahim. And I'm using the Latinized or Anglicized names to show the non-Muslims that the prophets you believe in are in our religion as well. Uh, Prophet Lut or Prophet Lot was in, in the same time as Prophet Ib uh, Abraham or Prophet Ibrahim. I believe they were cousins if I recall correctly. Or Prophet Lut was Prophet Ibrahim's nephew, either or. I always forget. Then after that, I would say Prophet Ishaq, possibly. And then Prophet Yunus. I honestly do not know the proper timeline <coughs> for Prophet Yunus with respect to <coughs> Prophet Abraham because I believe he was possibly after these two prophets, but maybe during the time of this prophet. To avoid confusion, I will stop at Prophet Isaac, peace be upon them all. How many elements do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So these are not needed. Okay. Technically, I can have an array larger than the number of elements, but that would be a complete waste of memory <laughs> because the other, the remaining two elements will ha will contain null so it is it is wasting memory needlessly i will store the elements in this array here oh sorry and prophet enoch actually prophet seth is before prophet enoch i forgot prophet seth He is the, the third sibling out of 40 siblings. The children of Prophet Adam and Lady Eve. People think that they were only Cain and Abel and that we are the descendants of a killer. No, we are not. <laughs> Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, and Lady Eve bore 40 children. 20 male and 20 female. Prophet Seth was a survivor. It was not only Cain and Abel. Prophet Abraham's name is long. Okay, I will replace Prophet Abraham, or rather the name Abraham, not the Prophet himself, with Seth, Prophet Seth, peace be upon them all. But Prophet Seth is obviously before Prophet Enoch's time. Then Prophet Lut. Then Prophet Isaac. Okay. This is an array. If I wish to retrieve a particular element from this array, firstly, I will have to use a for loop. Then I will iterate through the entire array to obtain a particular name. Let us see how this will function in terms of coding. Here it will be string name of array. I did not provide the name of the array. I will call it names. Here I will say if name dot equals Seth then add certain logic or I could say system dot out dot print line uh, for example print names dot uh, sorry names 
5, for example. What is the big O notation for this iteration? Well, I have the cheat sheet here. To access it, you have O of 1. Why O of 1? Because I am... Oh, Sorry, not this one. Because I am offering the index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the array will be able to access it immediately. However, and that is what we are trying to minimize using the hash table, searching in arrays is O of N. What does that mean? technically theta not O because it is the average or <coughs> the exact bound the best case is Omega Omega theta big O but people tend to refer to it as big O anyways they do not compare between average and worst the search here is theta of n or O of n which means that if the number of elements is small, the process will be fast, but as the number of elements increases within the array, the time complexity will also increase. To overcome this issue, hash tables were designed to expedite the process as you see here, as opposed to the slow process of arrays. But how are hash tables faster than arrays when they are built upon arrays? They use arrays as their foundation. How are they faster? Because of this part here, the hashing. So what happens or how is a hash used? Instead of adding elements solely like so, a key or an identifier is added or is ac uh, accompanies them to enhance or expedite the process. How so? Let us remove this. Here I will write the index of each element so we begin with zero then we have one two three four and five these are the indexes or indices of the elements of this array Instead of providing the element by itself, we accompany an identifier with that element. So I will delete these and recreate the array, but with this identifier or this label attached to it. This is obviously incorrect with respect to coding we would not write the label and its value in such a manner i am representing it visually diagrammatically or graphically nothing more but this is not how they would actually be represented here we will have the array uh, Or perhaps I do not need this space and have it expand naturally. Instead of saying Adam by itself, I will assign a label to it, 0, 1, Adam, like so. So this becomes the label for this value here. This is the identifier. What is the purpose of this end identifier? You will see in just a moment. And notice that it is of the data type string. I emphasize this because if you are using the label as a numerical value, an integer, the hashing will differ. We will see how in just a moment. 
know what? This is how I will represent it. I will create it as if it is a two-dimensional array and then use these pairs individually like so. Then I will assign 0, 2 to the name Enoch. Then another identifier or another label, 0, 3. Noah, then another identifier, 0, 4, Seth, then I will trick you by changing the identifiers instead of counting in such a manner, I will say here for profit a lot. Was he a Syrian? Uh, he, I think he could have been an Elamite because Sodom and Gomorrah were near the Dead Sea and I think the nation or the empire of Elam was in that area. If I recall correctly, I could be mistaken. If I am, please correct me. I would like to learn where it was actually located. And lastly, we can say here, Prophet Isaac was in Palestine. Like so. Now we have the labels attached to the values or the elements of the array. Identifiers or labels. That is not the proper term for them in the programmatic field. We will come to that term in just a moment. Perhaps I can organize this like so. Oh, this is perfect. This is perfect. And push this here like so. So what happens with this label? How does this label enhance the performance of hash tables? Instead of assigning elements to an array in a sequential order, as we have seen at the beginning of this lecture here, instead, the label is used to calculate a hash then this hash is used to calculate the index in which the element will be placed. Do not worry, I will represent all of what I spoke now visually. So I will push this downwards a bit. Okay, let us begin with one element at a time. Let us begin with the first element. I wish to store the name Adam in this list. However, I also wish to expedite the process of searching, inserting, and deleting, not accessing, because accessing is simple since you access using the index number. But I do not wish to rely on the index number, or rather I cannot rely on the index number to search for an item or an element, insert it or delete it. I can rely on the index to access or to get a value, as we have seen in the previous for loop. But I cannot use the index to retrieve the name Adam. What if I wish to search through this? Um, actually, let me return the names. What if I wish to search through this array to see if the name Seth is an element within this array? Arrays do not have the contains method. How would I be able to search through this array to locate the name Seth quickly, that is? We can do it, but slowly. It will simply be an O of N. But that is slow. We want to aim for O of 1 to search quickly like so. Instead of search, instead of iterating through the entire array, 
and writing an if statement if name uh, dot equals Seth perform a certain logic we can search for the name through its associated label if we search through the label if we search for the label sorry we will be able to retrieve its associated value or element easily similar to the retrieval or searching for a, me a medicine in a cabinet if you are searching for Tylenol for example you would not know that the box you are holding in your hand contains Tylenol unless you read the label if people mix the pills within the packaging that is a different story <laughs> but you will identify it from its label so visually you would be able to identify the medicine quickly because of its label if the label did not exist you would have to open each box in your cabinet retrieve the pills and search for the brand on the pills if it has been engraved which will obviously be slower but it will be faster if you look at your cabinet search for the label at the surface once you locate it you you retrieve it the same concept applies here we are trying to search for the label associated with a particular element which will allow the program to search and retrieve that element quickly we can retrieve it slowly but we wish to optimize the performance so we need to retrieve the value quickly how would these labels or identifiers be used let us use this pair here the label or the identifier and its associated value again this is not how they are represented in code I am merely doing this diagrammatically or visually we will not write code like so it is written in a different manner so how would we write unless you are using JavaScript that is a different story <laughs> how would we use this label quite easily instead of populating the array in a sequential order I will delete these again the program will take this label here then it will convert it into a hash or a hash code through the hashing function hashing I will just call it hashing that is the name of the process anyways through hashing it will yield a number the number will be depend on the nature of the hash itself how does it calculate the convert the transformation or the conversion certain hashes convert strings to their ascii representatives which are numerical values and adds them all together to give you the final hash that is one method there are other methods with more complex equations for the sake of simplicity nothing more for the sake of simplicity let us say that the hash for this after calculation was 25 for the sake of simplicity I am not saying I, I used a particular hashing equation or a hashing algorithm I am merely providing this number for the sake of simplicity now that the hash has been calculated uh, hold on let me try to organize this diagram so that everything is as clear as I can muster here like so uh, return it to rectangular this will be 
the object of data type string. So object, but it is of data type string as indicated by the double quotes. Then it will be hashed. by the hashing algorithm then a number will appear or manifest this is the hash and it is of data type int hash this hash and this is the equation used for hash tables. There could be other implementations or other modifications of this equation. But for hash tables, this is how it is calculated. We wish to put this label in this array. But this array is only six elements. We do not have an array that accommodates 25 elements. So this number must be placed within this boundary from 0 to 5. How can we convert this or place 25 within this boundary? Through division. This hash is then divided by the total number of arrays uh, of elements sorry so six in this scenario mm, since it is six hold on instead of 25 let us choose a different number i looked at this and i made the mistake that we only have five elements but it is actually six <laughs> So we need to change this number again for the sake of simplicity, nothing more. And you will see why I changed the number. Uh, let us uh, let us choose. Okay, uh, twenty-four. Let us choose twenty-four. This number will then be divided by the size of the array. I should not have said number of elements because it, this array is empty. But the size of the array that I wish to add these elements to. It could be 6, it could be 10, depending on your usage. But I will use 6 for this example. Then, to associate the identifier with the array or to start actually inserting the elements into the array, this hash will be divided by the total number of available compartments or the length of the array. This will be divided by let us use um, this color, 6. What is 6 in this scenario? It is the size or the length of the array. Array length. Now, I do not wish to test your mathematical skills. <laughs> But the answer to this will be 4. But that is not the number we seek. We do not seek the quotient. We seek the remainder of this division. Uh, hold on, let me adjust this slightly so it is clearer. Whoop. And whoop, there it is. Okay. This will yield six, which uh, sorry, uh, four, which we do not want. We do not want the quotient. This is a number we do not want or care about. 
I believe this is how you spell it. Yeah, this is how you spell it. This is a number we do not care about or a result we do not care about. What do we care about? We care about the remainder of this division. That is what we care about. And what is the remainder in this scenario? The remainder is zero because 24 is divisible by six. Why did I add six? <laughs> oh man, okay, I will type this again. I apologize. Remain there. And then I will use a different text box just in case this happens again. Remain there. Again, six. I do not know why I'm typing six. Remain there zero. This is what we want. This number is what we want. This is what we are seeking this zero becomes this zero so this remainder functions as the index at which this value or this element will be placed so the name Seth will actually be placed here because of the remainder I will type Seth here without the double quotes to avoid consuming space. So how is the label being used here? It is being used through its hash. This hash is now connected to this remainder. And this remainder functions as the index of the array at which the value will be stored. So as you can see, with hash tables, the data is not stored based on sequential order, as with arrays, array lists, and linked lists, but rather they are stored based on the remainder of the division between the hash and the array length. Let us cover another example to cement the idea. So I will move this slightly downwards and cover a new label. So now this identifier through its hash can help us retrieve Seth quickly from a search. We can now search for it but instead of searching with Seth, we search with the label. This label is then hashed and compared to the original hash. The index is located and the data is retrieved. That is why hash tables are quickest with respect to data retrieval or searching to be precise. Let us cover another example. Let us use this one. So here we will use the identifier Palestine. To be able to search for the name Isaac. So again, it will be hashed. And you probably know why I chose 24, because I wanted the remainder to be 0. Okay, what if I choose, what if this was hashed to 25? 25. Then it is divided by the array length again, and it is the same array length. And this will give us a remainder of uh, where is Brown? A remainder of one. S six times four is twenty-four plus one 
gives us 25. So that is the remainder. I will write the quotient here for you if it would help you understand how the remainder was obtained. You can always use a calculator, obviously. And this was 4. 6 times 4 is 24, plus the remainder 0 is still 24. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 1 gives us 25. This becomes the index associated with this label or this identifier, which means that the name Isaac will be placed at this index, which matches this index here. So here we will place the name Isaac. Uh, wait, is it uh, oh yeah, one S? I know his actual name is Haq, alayhi salam. <coughs> Peace be upon him. So sometimes I forget the, sp uh, the anglicized spelling. And that is basically how hash tables sort or insert data into its array and then searches for it. So now if I wish to search for the name Isaac, I will search with the identifier or the label. Remember, we always search with the label, never with the value or the element itself. That is why the label is, that is why you provide the label. And that is why it is, I switched from numerical string values to actual alphabetical values because it does not matter what you provide it will always be hashed then the remainder will be obtained to fit the data within a small array like so but we have an issue what is the issue what if two elements share the same remainder Hashing is not perfect. Sometimes the calculations will yield the same result. That is why people try their best to optimize the hashing functions, and that is why there are multiple hashing functions to try and reduce the probability of this scenario as much as possible. I will take Elam here as a reminder of what Prophet Lot went through with Sodom and, Sodom and Gomorrah, which is unfortunately everywhere in this day and age. Anyways, Elam. And here, I will copy this. Why did I copy two? I just want one. <laughs> there we go. And I will copy these as well. There and delete this, delete this, capture this. So now this label, which is attached to this value, shares the same remainder as this label with this value. So what does that mean? This will be placed at index 0. Unfortunately, index 0 is occupied. So how will this be stored here if it is being occupied? This is known as a collision. They are colliding with one another. They are, I think it should have been called competition instead of collision because they are competing for the same location. But it is called collision. <laughs> so I will highlight it in red. Here is a collision. The hash table is trying to insert the name lot here. But 
the compartment is already occupied. So there will be this compartment refuses to have any other name enter or be stored in it. So this is known as a collision. So we discovered the main hindrance of a hash table, which is the main hindrance of hash maps as well. We will see that later, God willing. How can we minimize collisions? We minimize collisions by increasing the size of the array. Unfortunately, if you increase the size of the array to accommodate for a small number of elements, it will be a complete waste of memory. So it is always best to have the array size fit the number of elements you wish to store. But then the probability of collisions increases. How do we decrease collisions or rather, how do we resolve collisions? That will be saved for the next video to avoid prolonging this any further. So do not worry about collisions now for with respect to this lecture. For now what you need to understand is how the data is stored in a hash table. You must associate the data with identifiers because data is plural or labels. So the label is always associated with a value. But instead of calling them labels, let us call them in the proper term. Keys. These labels are known as, a, as keys. Why keys? Because they unlock the location of its value. Hence the term key. I would prefer label instead of key but that is how they are called. So hash tables must utilize <clears throat> keys and their values. This is known as a key value pair because they are pairs and they are always associated with one another. They always accompany one another. The key may be insignificant or it may be definitely essential or not essential it will always be essential but it may play a significant role and it may be an insignificant player in the field regardless of its significance it must exist to allow hash tables to search for the values We will discuss this in greater detail after we cover collisions, inshallah, bi idhnillah and God willing, where we actually see what is being stored here in actuality. Then we will cover coding. We will create a hash table, a small hash table, and witness collisions in a practical implementation. This was completely theoretical to help you understand how hashes are used to store elements in an array efficiently and allow for quick searching. How is the hash actually used or how is the key actually used to, to search for data? That is what we will see after we cover collisions, and God willing we will see the type of data being stored in each array block here. This was simply used to simplify the material. But in the, in the upcoming lectures, بإذنillah and God willing, we will see how the hash is used as a key to search for its associated value. And that is it for this lecture. I hope this video was helpful and beneficial to you all. 
enjoy the rest of your day everyone be safe take care and peace be upon you all wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad kama sallayta ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim wa barik ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد